Hi, good people. Hey, good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? I feel like my earrings on backwards. They doing something. They 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 doing something tonight. Good evening, good people. Good evening. I am dancing to um <laughs> music that's in my head that does not even exist <laughs> so hey welcome good evening everyone my name is lolita perry but my friends call me lola i am the creator of lola's world <laughs> come on welcome to my world over at lola's world i am a social activities facilitator what that means is I bring groups of people together for activities that promote a life skill, self-sufficiency, community, and overall fun. So I'm bringing you all, you are the people, together for an activity. And the activity that I'm talking about tonight is gardening. Listen, I live in Washington, D.C., and there's not a whole lot of space when you're living in the city to, to grow in a traditional manner, which is down in the ground. And one of the methods I've been using is through containers. So I've grown um, fruits and vegetables in containers and been very successful. So I'm going to take you on that journey. Lola's World is full of things that um, are not just teachables but it's things that i love to do so you're getting all of my excitement and i'm giving you all of the information that i know hey key so i see you in the office and i see you on the book that's what i'm talking about tell my girl chloe i said hey girl <laughs> so i wanted to do a follow-up on yesterday i owe you guys some information yesterday I showed you all this little trinket that I got from Walmart. It is Ball's um, Herb Growing Kit. And yesterday, I unboxed it in front of you. And there were some things in here that I didn't understand. Well, there was one thing here that I didn't understand what it was purposed for. So in the um, Herb Growing Kit that I got for Walmart, 20 bucks. It allows you to grow basil, cilantro, and mint right inside your kitchen in the house where you can pluck and harvest it whenever you need it, which I thought was awesome, which is also why I said y'all pray for me because this is a season where they're releasing all the new stuff and I don't want to bring all of the new stuff home because I will, I will. don't want to blow the budget. So they have this, this mason jar where you can actually grow your, your um, herbs in a kitchen. And I'll walk real quick through the process, um, again, as a recap to show you how it works and how you can have fresh herbs in your kitchen and explain to you the one item that I couldn't remember what was the purpose of it. And that was for the charcoal. I was like, what, why are we putting charcoal? Not like the one you put on your grill, not like that. Not the activated one you use to brush your teeth. If it's, it's a different type of, um, charcoal <laughs> so here's what you do you have three jars and you have these mixtures the first thing you're going to do is each jar has some some food and plant food it's just like the stuff they give you when you buy some roses and they want you to put it down in the water this is a fertilizer so you're going to or plant food i'm sorry you're going to take all three of these get a gallon jug dump them all into that gallon jug of water mix it up and then you're going to fill the jar up to about the 24 ounce. It's marked on here, okay? After you do that, you're gonna take this little basket and it has these ribbons. You're gonna take it and set it right down into the water. The ribbon acts as a wicking tool and so it's gonna soak up the water and bring it right into your soil mixture so that you have the right amount of water going towards your um, your root, rooting system. So after you set that down, you're gonna take this perlite. It's white, it's fluffy. And the perlite I explained to you all yesterday that there's a difference between a potting mix and a garden soil. When you go to buy your soil or your dirt for your garden, 
and you're doing it in containers, Make sure, make sure you buy potting mix. You don't want to get the garden soil because that's for your bed. Down in the garden bed where it's connected to the ground, that's where it's going to hold water and that's a good thing. But when you are growing plants inside of containers, you need the soil to be light and airy and you need good drainage. So this perlite, you can't really see it but it's white it's fluffy it almost looks like that that white fluffy styrofoam that we get in our packaging you're going to take that and you're going to put it right down into this reservoir here okay put that right down in there so that's plant food and then the white perlite after that you're going to take this is a dirt pellet that's what i'm calling it that's not the official name you're going to take this dirt pellet put it in some water it's going to expand and you're going to drop that right on top of the perlite. Boom. Okay. Then you're going to take your seed. These are cilantro. Very nice. You're going to take your seeds, dump those onto the dirt, right? Push it down into the dirt a little bit. Then you're going to take this charcoal and you're going to pour it on top of the seeds. Then you're going to take some water and just wet it. Wet it just enough right over the top. And the charcoal is... um. It's a another type of feed or fertilizer, and it creates a good pH balance for your um, your vegetables, and it's going to help it grow. So that's what the charcoal is for. The great thing is, after all of these items are gone, you can still duplicate this. You can do it again. So that's kind of awesome. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you all today, and I want to do a quick recap for you. Now, while we were here yesterday, I got really excited about something I found at the Dollar Tree. That, that, okay, I got really excited because I found some stacking trays, some stackable trays that um, allow you to build a tower. And... Um, they're still here today. I went and I made another round today. These are awesome because the tower allows you to build up high instead if you don't have a lot of space. These can sit in a driveway. These can sit on the porch. This can sit on the deck. This can sit behind or beside a bush in your yard and you can grow some vegetables i got really excited and i got to thinking yo this would make an awesome strawberry tower can y'all see the strawberries like flowing over the side i am so excited that i said i had to go back to the store today to see if i could find some more i found five that wasn't enough so you know what your girl is gonna have to do i'm gonna have to go to dollartree.com and order a case <laughs> A case, I have to order 36 of them, but I'm figuring, I'm going to figure out what to do with those 36. But let me show you. Somebody um, was so nice. My friend Shelly was so nice yesterday to say, Lolita, don't you already have something like that? Well, yeah, I do. But, you know, I wanted some more, so I went and got them. So, yes, they. I do have these already. And um, I'm going to show you the difference between the two. Let me show you the difference between the two real quick. I'm going to show you the seeds that I purchased and I'm getting ready to um, use as well. So this is the version that I got at the Dollar Tree. Easy. They stack really good together. This is the version that I got from Aldi's last year. Let me see if you can see. The difference. <laughs> this is Dollar Tree. This is Aldi's. And you can see off the bat, like, it would almost fit right in there, except for the sizing is a little bit different. But I'm going to show you the clear difference between the two. Um, let's see. I'm sorry if y'all see the dog. He, he's moving. Y'all, why y'all ain't tell me my forehead is just, like, amazingly big? But it's okay. So, the Dollar Tree version, let's see. The Dollar Tree version in terms of height comes about four inches high. Whereas, the one from Aldi's 
comes about six and a half inches high. So it's a lot higher. So it's going to allow the roots to go a little bit deeper, but that's not an issue. This one is um, about 13 inches in diameter, about 13 inches wide. Whereas the, I'm looking at the apex of this, um, at most it's about 12 inches wide. So they're almost the same width, except for um, the depth, how deep they go is a little bit, the Aldi's version is a little bit bigger. Now here's the thing, I'm getting about two inches, or you can see how clearly, how, let me see, can y'all see that? The depth, the, the transition between the two, they're the same width, it's just that one is a bit higher, which makes it um, capable to have some deeper roots in this one. I grew a lot of things. Well, um, all the herbs grew in this tower. The one from Aldi's I got last year was 10 bucks, and I got three trays. So that comes out to $3.33.33 for each one, right? Versus this is only a dollar a piece. I'm probably going to yield the same amount of growth, except for this one is a little bit, a lot of bit, a third cheaper, two thirds cheaper than this one was. It's a little more compact. I'm probably going to get the same amount of yields. Time is going to tell. And these were only one dollar. So not much difference, which I think is awesome. And like I showed you all yesterday, these stack really well. Dollar Tree, guys. Dollar Tree. So the one that's going to be on the top, we're going to make this one pretty. We're going to put our vegetables, our, I'm sorry, our herbs in here. But then I'm going to put a plant right in the middle that has some flowers that's going to draw the bees because we need to draw the bees. We need the pollinators, right? So I'm going to put a plant right here, something that's going to be very um, robust and something that's going to draw them. Now, the herbs do not need to be pollinated. They just need some water and some sunlight and the herbs are going to go bananas. I've never really fertilized my herbs. They just grow water and sunlight, water and sunlight. That's what they need. So, um, but my other plants in the garden are going to need pollinators. So whenever I get an opportunity, I try to plant some flowers around that will draw some of the bees to the area. So these will sit on the porch um, in each one of these pockets. So let's take a look at how many different pockets we have here. So you're talking about three, six, nine, twelve. That's twelve plants on here alone. On here alone, guys. And these can stack as high as you want them. So this is really convenient. Um, and when you get done with them, smooth operator. That's done. Okay, so let's talk about what are we growing this year. Are you guys planning to grow anything this year? Hey, MJ, good evening. Hey, Valerie, I see you. <laughs> so um, y'all know I like the show from back in the day when we were kids and um, it was Romper Room and she would look into her mirror. I know it's a magic mirror now, I'll be all right. She would look into that mirror and she would say, I see this person, I see Johnny, I see Dave, I see Sarah, but she would never say she saw Lolita. So I see Lakeisha, I see Valerie, I see Mary. Thanks for joining guys. <laughs> So let's talk about what we're growing. So you know in my towers, I'm going to grow an herb garden. This year, I wanna grow all of the herbs so that I can dehydrate them and have um, seasoning, create some seasonings for this fall and this winter. Now, I went to the store. I have some leftover seeds from last year. I'm gonna dispose of those that did not do well but I got a jump start on some of the um, the herbs that I want to do. So we're looking at, y'all, like a deck of cards. Hey, Marlene. So let's go through them. I got some basil. Got some oregano. Now, there's different types of basil. Let me tell y'all something about this here. This is a lemon basil. 
I love all of the vegetation. This is a lemon basil. There's also a pineapple basil out there. And as soon as I find it, listen, that's going into the tower because that is amazing. What do you do with lemon basil? What do you do with pineapple basil? So that's going to go on all of my fish. That's going to go on my chicken. That's going to go into my salsas. The other thing is going to go really good once, once you mash it up. And I don't know if you all do this. You like freeze some um, oil and you can mix some herbs in them. Baby, that's going to go right in there because that stir fry with that lemon basil is going to be amazing. Trust. Oh, Marlene, you're going to have some tomatoes, pepper, herbs, and cucumbers. Yes, honey. I'm going to do some cucumbers this year, too. We're going to cook it up. And you know what we're going to do with those cucumbers? We're going to pickle them. And we're going to make us some pickles. I can't wait to see your garden. You did a great, robust garden last year. So it's the other herbs. We got us some rosemary, guys. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got some lemon balm. <laughs> I got some thyme. <laughs> I got some peppermint. You need the peppermint, the spearmint, the chocolate mints. The mints come in so many different flavors. Have fun with it. We got some parsley, some chamomile, and cilantro. That's just what we starting off with. Now, these are seeds. The good thing with these is I'm going to direct sow. I'm not going to put those under the... My dog is over here playing. I'm not going to put those under the lights and grow them indoors. I'm going to direct sow them. So those are the herbs that I am starting with this year. But the um, once I do do the herb garden. But the first thing that you're going to see me put out this year is going to be some kale, lettuce, and spinach. Now, if I can find um, some collards, or I can get my collards here in time. I'm going to grow some collards. Collards, kale were so easy to grow, guys. All they wanted was water. I didn't have to get fertilizer or anything like that. I feel like maybe whatever the nutrients in the soil was, it just used those up, which was great. So let me show you what I went and got. Um, last year, I grew a... Um, I grew a lettuce last year in containers, in containers only, and they did so good. I still have some seeds left over from last year, and I am going to keep using these seeds. These grew amazing in the containers, in the towers that I showed you all. They just kept growing. I would harvest them off, which would mean I would just take some of the lettuce off, and it would just keep producing more lettuce in a container. Here's another thing to look for when you're growing these things. Let me show you. Some of these things, like this lettuce right here, down here in the corner, it says that it is it has a little plant um, container. And it actually says on here, it's a container variety, which means that it's designed to grow in small spaces. So if you're new or this is you're not sure of your footing, you're just getting started, this particular lettuce and there's so many other different veg vegetables that are designed for containers get you a container variety so it doesn't grow too big it's like they have squash where the leaves they will grow i mean huge like three feet tall you don't want to get something like that in a container you want to get something that's going to grow a little smaller same thing with tomatoes you want to a container variety might be good like they have patio tomatoes and they grow the little small red ones but you know we can just get a bigger container for tomatoes though and just grow big husky tomatoes if we want to so but there is a container variety so i did find that type of lettuce but i'm going to use this lettuce that i had last year until the wheels fall off because it was so good i grew them in the towers on the front porch and i just kept pulling them but i also put them in a huge barrel in the backyard underneath the deck the, they didn't get much bigger and they just kept producing, which lets me know this, this particular brand is called Lettuce Black Seeded Simpson that grows really good in, in the space that I had. Again, not a, not a whole lot of fertilizer. 
I ignored them a lot of times and I had to pull them and put them on sandwiches because they were growing. It was growing so, so fast and so well. And it was tasty. And I knew there was no pesticide on it. Not getting no more organic than that, honey. I cleaned it. I grew it. I knew exactly um, where it came from, which is why part of the reason why I love gardening. So we're going to grow lettuce this year. And we got us some kale. <laughs> we need the kale. Now, I got a curly kale. I got one that's a little more straight laced kale that um, I'm used to seeing. Um, I got a different variety of lettuce, um, something called a bib. So I'm going to try that out and see how that grows a container. It doesn't say container, but I'm going to try it anyway. If it gets too big, it's only going to grow to um, as big as a container will allow it to grow anyway. I got some spinach. So we are putting out our kale. We are putting out our lettuce and we are putting out our spinach as soon as we can because they're cool um, weather vegetables. They grow well in the cool weather. So after that first frost is done between the end of April and beginning of May, these are going to be the first things that um, go out for me. And then we'll do it again at the end of the year as we transition into fall because they grow so well in the cool weather. Um, the cucumbers, I did get me some cukes, Marlene. And this is a container variety. Now, let me tell you about cucumbers. Cucumbers are viney and they, they like to climb. They're going to go up. So they need a trellis or some type of support beam in order to support the um, cucumbers. Now they will grow along the ground if you train them, but the cucumbers need to grow on a, um, a trellis. Now, because this is a container variety, it's not gonna grow but so much. You're not gonna get but too much of a yield, which is perfect for small spaces and for beginners. You're gonna get some cucumbers. You probably won't get a whole lot of production, um, for the container variety, but if I were to put just a regular regular brand of cucumbers in a container, hey, Karen, girl, then you would, um, then it would just go probably berserk, but it's going to need to be supported. So you're going to need um, like some chicken wire to put around it and you'd have to train it to go around and to climb. Um, if you want to be bold and brave with that, but I am going to do a container variety. I grew these on the sidewalk um, last year in a five gallon paint container. I grew them for somebody else and they never came and got them. So you know who ate them? Yes. And again, they don't need a whole lot sunlight and good drainage in the soil when you're growing in a container, honey, they will do amazing. Now, let me tell you about crop failure. Last year, um, gardening is, has its highs and it has its lows. And last year, I had a little bit of a low for the very first time with my beans. Beans, I've been able to get beans to grow in my kitchen windowsill. If you've ever had children or you've watched children, one of the things they do in school is they take a little bean and they put it down in the dirt and they water them and they watch that little thing grow. Beans grow very quickly and they have a high yield. Never had a problem with beans before. Well, last year, you know, I did the three sisters method. I grew the corn the squash and the beans together. The idea was that you plant your corn and it would begin to grow. You plant your squash and it would create this cover down here and um, beat back the weeds, okay? And then you would plant your, um, your beans and it would grow around the stalk. Well, guys, I was so disappointed. Last year, I um, pulled out my Kentucky beans. Kentucky beans, I've never had a problem with Kentucky beans. Again, I can get them to grow in my kitchen windowsill and get beans in the kitchen in the summertime. This pack last year didn't give me nothing. Whatever I grew in the bed, they did not grow. I saw the vine going, but they didn't yield any, any fruit. I was like, where, where are my beans? I grew them in containers. They just bushed. 
and they didn't yield anything. So sometimes you'll have crop failure because the seed is bad. Not necessarily your soil or anything that you did. It could just be that the, it was a bad batch. So I believe these were a bad batch. So even though I have seeds left over from last year, I'm not going to use these um, again. Those are going to go in the trash. I just needed to keep them so I know which ones to avoid. This year, I'm going to try um, a Blue Lake variety. And this is a container container variety so i'm going to try that one and then i had a um tender green improved so same same concept beans i'm going to try them because these are great for canning these are great for um hey i just need to throw in some stir fry one night go out in the garden put them fresh i'm telling y'all i need to live in an area where i can do this all year round wouldn't that be awesome to be able to have fresh Fruits and vegetables, I mean, at your disposal right then and there. Well, that's my plan for this year. What are you guys planning to grow? Now, Marlene had already told us what she's planning to grow. She's going to have some maters. I can't do maters until next year. Tomatoes um, are interesting because you can, you have to do those on a crop rotation. You cannot grow tomatoes in the same soil over and over again they have to be rotated every three years um the soil will not respond well you'll find that you'll get blight and you'll have failure and you do not want to do that so the very first year that i grew tomatoes i had this berserk harvest i was like oh my gosh i didn't know that you couldn't grow tomatoes in the same place without changing out the soil at least you got to change out the soil well the next year i had crop failure i was like wait a minute same same tomatoes like they blighted the the aphids the pest came and ate them up it was horrible so i said well maybe it was something i did let me do some research no 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 so i took all of the dirt out of my bed replaced it and they did fine i was like hmm Something not right here. So I did some research and you have to rotate certain vegetables. You cannot plant them in the same spot every year. You got to move them around. So next year I will be planting um, tomatoes and I want to do some heirlooms. The heirloom tomatoes are the ones that look real um, creative. The, the tops are not smooth, but they're like they're indented and and they got all these different shapes and I want some dark ones. So I want to try that. Now, listen here, Mary, I do want to buy me a thumb. <laughs> well, listen, Karen, I want you to grow something too. Karen says she has no clue where she's growing, but she's growing something. She's growing something. I want you to grow it and I want you to eat it and I want it to be good. Um... Do you know what kind of garden beds you are building? Are you going to get one that's already prefabbed at maybe like the Home Depot and like kind of put it together? Or are you going to get some wood where you're going to cut it and DIY? I would love to see your beds when you're done, Karen. Mary said that she's going to do for the first time some mint, some parsley. We're going to make sure that Mary has some chocolate mint, some spearmint, some lemon mint. She's going to have a variety to find out what it is that she likes. And um, I would love to buy a farm. That's the big dream, honey. To be on a homestead full time. That would be awesome. And like yesterday, I said some chickens and some ducks, some fresh eggs, some fresh eggs and a cockadoodle doo, honey. Yes, that would be the life. Well, I want to say thank you all for um, checking in. You're going to do a raised bed. Oh, this is going to be exciting, Karen. I can't wait to see what y'all are going to put in there. The journey is so much fun. You do have to, um, you do have to fight. Sometimes you got to fight, you know, the, the vermin and the different things that would try and come and eat up your food. You learn different um, vegetables don't grow well together. You'll learn that different vegetables grow really well together. That's what I learned about the three sisters method is that they, they fed off of each other. They covered one another and they um, supported one another, which was great about the, um, the three sisters method. 
um, I'm going to do the three scissors method one more time this year. And then next year we're going to um, cycle in the, the tomatoes into the bed, especially since I got all this good compost going on around here. It's going to be all the way live for anyone that lives in Washington, D.C. In case you didn't know this down at the Fort Totten station, they give D.C. residents um, Monday through Friday from 1, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. They will give you up to five bags of compost for free. You just have to bring your bags, 30 gallon bags. They will give you up to five bags. I had no idea. Free, no charge, five bags. So that's something to be able to have. So just remember, get the right kind of soil. When you are growing in the ground, make sure you are getting a garden soil. When you are growing in containers, make sure you get a potting mix because the, the soil that goes into the garden bed is a lot more dense and it holds water. So you want the ground to hold water in your beds. When you are growing in containers, you want your potting mix, it's light, it's fluffy, and it allows for good drainage. If you get a garden soil and you put it into your containers, it's gonna hold too much water and your plant needs the air it needs to be able to breathe and if you get too much water then your plant will drown and you'll have situations where oh i overwatered. so make sure you all plant a lot of flowers so that we can stimulate our pollinators which are our bees and our butterflies i have not given up on the idea of um the bees i'm looking at what type of bee house i can do now and where I, the best place I can put it, because I live in an HOA community where they spray the pesticide and they kill all of them. Guys, let me ask you something. When's the last time y'all saw a lightning bug? Y'all remember when we were kids, we used to see lightning bugs all the time. Where the lightning bugs go? When's the last time y'all seen a lightning bug? They are not around i might see one like here or there and it used to be when i was a kid we used to i mean used to go out it was like you could breathe them in i haven't seen a lightning bug since like forever have y'all seen any lightning bugs in y'all neighborhood maybe you know in the in the um outside of the city they might be a little more vibrant but i have not seen like a, sw a swarm of lightning bugs, like a whole bunch of them, Murray, because I have not seen lightning bugs. And part of that is because of the pesticide. It's killing off the good. Oh, one last thing, and then I'm going to let you guys go, for real, for real, because I have the gift of gab. <laughs> um, one other thing I'm thinking about doing is down the side of the house, I'm thinking about putting some, some fruit bushes like some berry bushes. And I believe that those will also draw some good pollinators. My neighbors will probably hate, hate me, but they're on the side of the house. They're not too close to my neighbors, but I need the bees. We need the bees. We need the pollinators. Mary, don't be catching them. Don't be catching <laughs> Y'all put them in the jars <laughs> like we used to do when we were kids. Um, that's the last thing I wanted to, um, tell you guys about. Thanks so much for, um, popping in. I will keep you up to date at the end of this month. I plan to put up the, um, the, the grow house, the indoor grow house that I have, um, with the lights and the soil. I'll show you the, um, the seed starting mix that I prefer, which is a burpee mix. I'll show you the whole process. I'm going to show you, um, when's the right time to fertilize when we put the seedlings out and how to transition them from, you can't just take your seedlings from growing indoors and put them outside. They have to be hardened off, which is a process where you transition them slowly. Like you put them out a little bit, you bring them back. You put them out and then you bring them back. So you can kind of get them used to being outdoors and they don't go into shock and you don't lose your good seedlings. So I'm going to show you the start to finish process with that as well as any of the seedlings that I choose to buy. Cause y'all know um, I'm going to buy some um, already made, um, already made plants, some seedlings. I'm going to have um, the easy process. <laughs> I always say I'm not going to do a lot, but then I always end up with a jungle. Y'all pray for my husband. Y'all pray for me. 
that we stay happily married after um i get this um jungle going in he came in and saw those um those stackables and was like leader what is going on all i can say is sir it's for our family it's for our livelihood i'm just saying remember when they said um they was talking about government furloughs. Bruh, I'm just saying, you government worker. We got to do what we got to do to take care of our own. <laughs> I had all the reasons, all the excuses. Mary said she liked my shirt. Y'all like my shirt? <laughs> Your girl survived and I'm still here. All right, y'all have an amazing night and I'll keep you updated with what we have coming up next. Have a great night, guys. Remember, you are enough. You have what it takes. You got the stuff honey, even on your worst day, you bad. They still scared of you. They intimidated by the strength that you still possess because you are enough. Honey, God put something amazing in you. They talk about black don't crack. Honey, listen, your strength is in him and it's because of him that you are still here you got it you got it you gonna give it you gonna serve it they gonna have to deal with it because you are going to leave this earth on empty give them everything you got honey don't spend nothing they ain't gotta like it because there's somebody that loves it y'all have a good night bye